Okay, everybody that's mugging sheep, this is a blindfold, you'll have one of these. On a chilly December morning in British Columbia, Foz Foster teaches a bunch of volunteers how to wrestle bighorn sheep. If you can do it, is get one horn and one front leg and just do this and they'll go down, they'll come right down for you. These people listen carefully because in less than half an hour, they will have to do what Foz is showing them. These guys are stronger than you are. What I'd like you to do is side hobble the sheep. The lesson is over, and it's time to capture Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep to take back to the United States. Good luck, guys. Each person has a specific job. Muggers blindfold and hobble the sheep. Bleeders collect blood and test samples. Net rollers handle the net. Trailer crews put on the radio collars. And Foz is the capture boss. Come on, girl. Come on. Alan Dickinson baits the bighorns under the net with tasty apple mash and hay, just as he's done for the past two months. Wish well, he had about 25 friends. Everybody's finally in position except the sheep. Yeah, he's a little guy. Come on, girl. Come on. I give a lot to have that be 30 sheep. Day one is quickly turning into a dry run. Yeah, we're not going to trap on this, Alan. There's no rams to keep a rams. There's only one ram lamb. Yeah. Let's, let's go. The bighorns are descendants of sheep brought to this canyon in 1927. Today, 450 wild sheep roam the surrounding mountains. This particular group has staked out the town of Spence's Bridge. Yes, they, they make themselves right at home in our place. And it's beautiful to see them sail over the fence. You would think that they had no weight whatsoever. You'd think that we just had a tame flock of sheep in there. They, they just go all around and eat whatever they like. Some people complain what they do to the garden. I think it's lovely. Most people in town are fond of the wild sheep and the tourists they attract. I don't mind living around the sheep. They're quite interesting just to watch them. Bring a lot of business here. They come up and look at them. You know, they may stay over the weekend. I, I just uh, like carrying on watching them, and then I take a lot of pictures. Uh, I come down here every year where they're rutting and take these pictures, movie cameras, and I like to get the pictures of the big sheep. The Bighorn's adopted home is also a primary transportation route through British Columbia. The Canadian National Railroad runs on both sides of the river. And a major highway goes right by town. The bighorns don't perceive 16-wheelers to be a threat. They loaf along the highway, and they cross it several times a day. At least 30 sheep are killed every year. Ironically, it was a Dodge Ram pickup that hit and killed the second largest ram recorded in British Columbia. Canadian wildlife officials decided to reduce the number of wild sheep in Spence's Bridge and give them to the U.S. Well, number one, it's, a, it's, a, it's goodwill. It's an international code of ethics almost to where, you, you know, someday we may need something back and we've got the excess sheep. And, and the bottom line is I think it's doing what's best for the herd too. I mean, from, from, a, from a perspective of managing the sheep, I mean, it's to the point where we owe it to the residents of Spencer's Bridge that we have to, you know, we have to make an effort to, to alleviate some of the problems of the population, overpopulated. On the second day of trapping, daylight finds the volunteers standing ready and 23 sheep eating under the net. Three years of planning are about to pay off. It's not going. I got nothing on the corners. But the net doesn't drop. I got no power. <laughs> you can go ahead and let the traffic go. This net's not falling. It turns out the battery for the release mechanism was too weak to trip the corners. And it just clicked. They didn't even yeah. spook when yeah. it clicked. It just. Oh, man, talk about the agony of defeat. <laughs> um, those types of things always happen when you have an audience. And so then it was kind of 
pick yourself up by your bootstraps and go start mechanicing and try and figure out what was wrong. That's enough people. Coming up next, sheep muggers hang on for the ride of their lives. It's day three. The early morning light reveals a new challenge for the crew trying to trap the bighorn sheep. This is quite a pile on that rocks right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to sit and wait. You know, we may have to just sit here and yeah, wait. If they come up empty-handed again, Boz may call the trapping operation off. Most of the volunteers have left, and even with a few local recruits, Boz is down to a skeleton crew. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on. But the anxiety disappears as the bighorns come running for their breakfast treat. Yeah, we got 21 under the net right now. Just let this one come in and we'll take them. Come on, girl. Okay. Here we go, Kurt. Okay, we got to pile up here, guys. Okay. Start taking them that way. The most important thing that needs to happen once the nest drops is you have to get to the sheep and restrain them so that so that they don't cause themselves harm or harm to another sheep. You need to effectively immobilize them, physically immobilize those animals and get a blindfold on them. Once you put a blindfold on them, they pretty much quit. They'll quit struggling. Fosman, young ram too. Anything under three, three and a half will take. That's good. Roll one time. Perfect, perfect, you're perfect, okay. He's off his back, that's what we need. Okay, I'll get a knee right in here. Okay, easy, mister. Easy, mister. Okay. Easy, buddy. Easy, buddy. Heck of a price to pay for breakfast. Okay, go ahead and hobble him, and I'll do this guy with a blindfold. Come on, guy. I know you got blood. For the sheep, probably the biggest thing we need to watch for is body temperature, increases in body temperature, because we're stressing them, their body temperatures go up and they get into a compromised position physiologically that if we're not ready to deal with that, could effectively kill the animal. Each mugger constantly monitors their sheep's temperature. They ride it on the animal's horns so the veterinarians can quickly see if an animal is overheating. 1066? Okay, well, she'll be okay. Dave Hunter is one of three vets on hand if there's a problem. And, uh, of course, the sooner we get them in the trailer, the better. Not every sheep that's trapped will go to the States. We've had very, very poor success moving large rams. And so you just, the conventional wisdom is you just don't do that. Okay, guys, we have a hot one here. Can you hand me a collar real quick? This one is going where? Moving a sick sheep or a dead sheep does us no good. We have to, we have to do everything in our power to, to bring these sheep along in a healthy condition. And we've been doing this about 15 years, and uh, the science of what you need to do to move a healthy sheep, we've got that down. We have a hot one here. We're going to put these in a quiet place. We had a couple of them that were just so freaked out they couldn't even stand up. Uh, that's to be expected from a, from a quick drop, quick restraint. Temperature was only a problem on one. Okay, two, up, go. A mix of relief and euphoria settles in with a job well done. Ecstatic. Nobody hurt, no people hurt, no sheep hurt. I'm happy. It was a rush. It was a rush. It was exciting because I know what these uh, sheep mean for the future of Idaho and for the Hell's Canyon project. This was good. We have the potential to catch some more this afternoon if everything goes right. We're halfway home. We still have we still have a little more to go. So because time is running out, it's decided to push another bunch toward the net. It's touchy business. I guess earlier today there were a couple of dogs that chased them. And so they didn't want to go by that place again. So we had to let them come back this way. Now they're they're doing pretty well. So I'm feeling pretty positive about it. Well, just from my limited experience, 
sheep don't necessarily do what you want them to do. That's all. And so it's anybody's guess as to what's going to work. They're breaking for it. At the last minute, the sheep take off, but then stop under the net for a snack. That's enough people. The muggers were scattered up and down the hillside. They were coming as fast and as hard as they could. You know, Vic said that he fell halfway down that mountain. Get him down if you can. <laughs> yeah, there was a period there where there wasn't a lot of hands on the sheep. But if eventually everybody got in, and, you know, no injuries, no, you know, no capture myopathy, everything went off without a hook. Okay. Start taking them that way. Coming up next, International Goodwill puts the sheep on the road. Wingman's a good article? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. My God, they put the ugliest man on the thing in there. Portland yeah. really is. I mean, you put him in there. <laughs> good picture. The trapping crew is all smiles this morning. They have three trailers full of healthy bighorn sheep. All the bighorns are going to Hell's Canyon, but they'll be released at three different locations. It's part of a three-state project called the Hell's Canyon Initiative. It's the first time that the three states have worked together on one transplant. Although we may not work together on single transplants all the time, but it represents our partnership. The main credit for this partnership goes to the Foundation for North American Wild Sheep. We've put up approximately 10 million dollars over the next I believe 20 years to fund the transplantation back into Hell's Canyon and for other things such as the habitat preservation down there. It, it's perfect for sheep. It's probably the best habitat in North America. So the states had worked together somewhat loosely beforehand but Fanaz is the one that formalized the project and got um, well it's really spearheaded it. Every bighorn is fitted with a radio collar because research will play a big role in this transplant. Collar? Well, the overall goal, of course, is to increase numbers of sheep in the canyon. But as we do that, we'd like to learn more about uh, sheep ecology, movements, survival, what the causes of mortality are. And that's why we put radio collars on the sheep and follow them pretty closely. And from that, they can identify... Wildlife biologists won't be the only the ones studying these so sheep. Students in Idaho and Washington time, adopted a bighorn. They even named it, Looks and like now they'll follow its adventures. It's going to be called Vivian. We'll have the All right. locations name. of the sheep available to the kids, and they'll be able... They have maps, and they'll be able to track their sheep. So I'm really looking forward to working with them on that. The crew and their sheep are finally on the road, 24 hours after the first bighorns were caught. As soon as the trailer's moving, they all just lay down and they chew their cuds and roll right along. You just need to have enough room in your trailer for the number of sheep so that they can all lay down. It's a lot easier on the sheep than it is the people, because <laughs> it's a straight pull. You're always concerned about the animals and uh, so there's always this, this very heavy hand on your heart saying, whatever we do, we got to do more, whatever. The crew has 15 hours of driving ahead of them, and it could be longer if they're delayed at the border. Strict rules apply to bringing wildlife into the U.S., which translates into mountains of paperwork. The permitting process to import sheep into the United States to export sheep from Canada, it's a full-time job for about 30 days. That's all you work on for 30 days prior to putting this together. Everything's in order, and they clear customs in less than 45 minutes. The crew and their cargo head into the night and to a new home. Sinking, guys. Yeah, we're sinking. We're, we're, we gotta get to shore. Coming up next, a wild, wet ride to safety. We're sinking. We would like to see them uh, 
get to a level that they can maintain that population no matter what catastrophic event comes along so that 25 years from now, we won't have to be manipulating populations and doing transplants to sustain wildlife for posterity here in Idaho. And I think that's our ultimate goal. It will have its fluctuations, but basically a stable population that our grandkids can enjoy. It's going to be important for us to say we made an effort to do what was best for Bighorn Sheep, for Hell's Canyon. The transplant crew is closing in on the end of their journey, Hell's Canyon. Thousands of Rocky Mountain bighorns once climbed its craggy cliffs, but they were wiped out by overhunting and diseases brought in by domestic sheep. The last leg of this long journey is by boat. Its metal bottom has triggered some concerns. It's going to work like a heat sink, so if you'd allow us to lay down some some chips, uh, you know, they're biodegradable, trust me. I'm the captain you. agrees to let them put down cedar chips to make the ride more comfortable for the sheep. Put that down, then we'll put this tarp in the bottom, okay? Okay, lay her on her side. No, no, down here, we've got a hobbler first. On the other side, other side. Okay, watch your feet. Some of the people here today were part of the first bighorn transplant to Hell's Canyon 20 years ago. Now an estimated 700 wild sheep live scattered up and down the river, but disease continues to threaten their survival. During the last epidemic, 200 bighorns died from a strain of the disease Pasteurella. It's very similar to bringing smallpox to Native Americans. Uh, a virus or a bacteria that they don't normally see can be devastating to them, so. The bighorns from Canada face the same risk, but wildlife biologists have tried to minimize the threat by choosing isolated release sites. It's a huge area, so we mapped, you know, vegetation, slope, water, all kinds of different factors that go into bighorn sheep habitat for this, but since we don't want these sheep to come into contact with the sheep that uh, were involved in the epidemic, um, these sites rated out higher than some other ones. They're great places. The crew steadily grows more excited as the boat descends into the wilds of Hell's Canyon. But then the unexpected happens. Okay, guys. Yeah, we're sinking. We gotta get to shore. Minutes away from the release site, the boat takes on water. Bilge pumps clogged by the cedar chips have stopped working. We don't have any better place. Why not right there? We're along here. It's fine. Let's get out. The captain heads for the bank, but the river current threatens to swamp the boat. We're sinking! Running out of choices and time, the captain tries again. Don't worry about our sheep. They've got their snorkels on. Okay, okay, wait, we got some help coming. Yeah, just keep their heads up. Come on, quick, guys. We need some help here. We got one in the back. Leon, take this one over. Oh. Watch your head, watch your head. Help him with the head. Chris, are you okay? Okay. Okay, help Corey here. He's by himself. Keep them on their stern until we get help. I don't know how to explain it, but it was a very, very bad moment for everyone. And um, we're really concerned about the sheep. Oh, everyone, even though we might have fallen in the river, I don't think anyone is really thinking about people. Everyone was concerned about the sheep. Luckily, we got the boat to shore and got the sheep Francis. out, and they should be doing fine. Francis. Let's start letting them go. I don't think we have any choice. Let's do on this end first. So Fear can, can produce a narcotic-like state in bighorn sheep. They can succumb to it and die, or they can just snap out of it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get. Okay. We're going to have to help them along, guys. You know, animals are stressed. Stress is a common factor. We think of it as a human trait, but animals are under stress all the time also. This was probably more than then we'd like to impose upon bighorn sheep for a relocation effort, but physically they're very strong animals. You saw how stressed off, uh, stressed out they were, and as soon as they got their legs under them, they were jumping up that hill. 
Near tragedy took the joy out of releasing these wild sheep, but farther up river in Oregon, it was a happy occasion. I feel really good, especially to get them on the hill, because I, I always worry about them until they do, because so many things can happen. Yes, they're going to do super. They may be missing the rose bushes and lawns of Spencer's Bridge now, though. Um, it's a positive thing that you can do as a biologist. It's something really tangible to restore an animal to its historic range. The sight of bighorns taking off into the wilds of Hell's Canyon is the culmination of three years of planning and goodwill between three states, two countries, and hundreds of individuals. It brings everyone a step closer to securing the future for wild sheep in a place they once roamed for centuries.